I'm Tracy Baxter with today's Record News Watch. Plans to sell off Orange County's Valley View nursing home have hit a significant snag. State Supreme Court Justice Elaine Slobot has ruled that the county legislature's 12 to 9 vote in April to transfer ownership of Valley View to an independent board, the first move towards a future sale, was invalid. Because according to the judge, a state law requires a 14 vote supermajority to sell property. Orange County Executive Steve Newhouse has issued a statement saying his office strongly disagrees with the judge's ruling and will appeal, saying Ulster County sold its nursing home with a 51 percent majority and that the Orange County Legislature voted with a 57 percent majority to do the same. Look for more on the story here at Record Online and in tomorrow's Times-Herald Record. A woman who had been convicted of stealing from investors who had hoped to see a water park built in Goshen was sentenced to prison time today. Liliana Traficanti was sentenced in U.S. District Court in Manhattan to 41 months in prison for conspiracy to commit wire fraud. And under terms of her plea agreement, she must also pay $750,000 in restitution. Traficanti had misrepresented herself as president of a local chapter of an organization called Child Help. She told investors their money was going toward a water park to benefit foster children. The money was then used on personal expenses and to repay others. There's one less area casino proposal for the state to consider now that Foxwoods has uh, taken its uh, proposed Catskills Resort project at the former Grossinger's Hotel in Liberty out of the competition. In its statement, Foxwood developers uh, said the prospect of an Orange County casino has made securing the required financing, quote, impossible. The decision leaves just two casino proposals in Sullivan, both of them at the site of the former Concord Hotel near Monticello. Times Herald Record reporter Steve Israel has been covering the Catskill Casino issue for decades. He says the late entry of six potentially more lucrative Orange County casino projects has completely altered the thinking of those hoping to land at least one casino in the Catskills. Well, these uh, people, projects in Orange County just came out of the woodwork, it seemed, and big players, and closer to the city. Uh, so yeah, that, I think that surprised everybody. The Foxwoods, they went in this uh, assuming, they say, that there would be two casinos in the Catskills and they would be one of them and uh, so yeah that that's been surprising the that that turn that there's so many Orange County players the Foxwoods decision comes just a couple of weeks before the June 30th deadline to submit casino applications officials connected to the Neville proposal in Ulster County say they won't go forward if Orange County lands a casino meantime Orange County Executive Steve Newhouse says casinos in his county can produce the most revenue and create the most jobs, which was the purpose, he says, of the gaming law. State police are investigating a threat made against a local school. Police are calling it an aggravated harassment complaint that was reported by the Roundout Valley School District and was targeted at Marbletown Elementary School in Stone Ridge. Police say a letter arrived yesterday threatening violence against the school. Anyone with information is asked to contact the State Police Bureau of Criminal Investigation. The number is 845-626-2800. With shooting incidents on the rise and criminal activity a constant concern, officials in the city of Newburgh will see if there's enough public support for the creation of neighborhood watch programs in sections of the city. A representative from the city's uh, police department will be on hand to talk about public safety concerns and the feasibility of neighborhood watches uh, during a public meeting set for this Thursday at 6 p.m. in the city council chambers on Broadway. Also to be discussed at the meeting, proposed zoning revisions for the city of Newburgh. Residents in Calicoon are mourning the loss of a prominent couple who died Sunday night when their Damascus, Pennsylvania home was destroyed by a fire that began with a powerful explosion. Friends and neighbors identified the victims as Frank and Carol Kay, the owners of the Calicoon flea market. Witnesses uh, say the explosion could be felt across the Delaware River in Calicoon. Parts of the house reportedly flew into the river. Investigators are looking at a propane heating system as the possible cause. The Kays were planning to close the business. They had owned it for the past 15 years. Today, a motorcade brought the body of a soldier killed in Afghanistan to his final resting place at West Point.
Funeral services were held today at West Point Cemetery for Captain Jason Jones of Orwigsburg, Pennsylvania, who was killed June 2nd. He was a member of an Army Special Forces unit who'd earned a bronze star during his earlier service in Iraq. Captain Jones had graduated from West Point in 2007 and was a member of the 82nd Airborne Division. A Kingston man is facing an assortment of charges following a domestic dispute early this morning. Uh, when Kingston police responded to the Wall Street residence, they heard a woman screaming. The man inside, 33-year-old James Whalen, refused to allow officers to come in. Police say he then pushed the woman out a second-story window and onto a porch roof. When police were finally able to get inside and arrest Whalen, he was charged with unlawful imprisonment, obstruction of governmental administration, reckless endangerment, and criminal mischief. A felony drug possession charge was added after police discovered a large quantity of oxycodone in the residence. When Valley Central High School holds its graduation ceremony Saturday, June 28th, Francesco Lopiccolo will be among those getting a diploma. And this 19-year-old has faced down a cancer and is now helping other young people navigate through their cancer journeys. Bone cancer meant Francesca's right leg had to be amputated when she was 14 years old. Now this cancer survivor has formed Fierce Young Adults, a support group for those in her age group to make sure they get the help and emotional support they need to confront their cancer diagnosis. I just want them to know that they're not alone and that through Fierce Young Adults that they have the support that, and that we can give it to them. and just to keep on fighting. I'm just glad that I can give support and just help people through it because I know how important it is to know that you're not alone through it. So being there for others and helping them just means a lot to me. The Fierce Young Adults Support Group meets on the third Wednesday of every month at the Hudson Valley Cancer Resource Center in Montgomery. Check out the entire video interview with Francesca here at Record Online and read her story in the current edition of Orange Magazine. The Town of Lloyd Police Department has been looking for a missing police canine. The police canine answering to the name Falcone was last seen in the area of Upper North Road in Highland last evening. Falcone is a German Shepherd, 17 months old, with a brown collar. Anyone with information on the whereabouts of Falcone is asked to call the Town of Lloyd Police Department at 691-6102. And a four-legged crime fighter in the Town of Newburgh can now do his police work a little more safely. Town Police Canine Officer Raven has been provided a bullet and stab resistant vest thanks to vested interest in canines. It's a Massachusetts based nonprofit organization that raises money to buy vests for police canines. Each vest costs $950. And since they began in 2009, vested interest has given two police departments more than 580 protective vests for their canine officers. <laughs> The rise in humidity in the region means a rise in the likelihood of showers and thunderstorms, and uh, we could see and hear a couple of them overnight. As for tomorrow, it'll be partly sunny and hot, with temperatures Wednesday up around 90 degrees, with the threat of a late-day thunderstorm. A Thursday will be partly sunny, and maybe not quite as warm and humid, with the highs reaching the upper 80s. Well, stay informed by starting your day with the Times-Herald Record and stay on top of breaking news whenever and wherever it happens right here at Record Online. For Record News Watch, I'm Tracy Baxter.